2020. World has number of crises in water, as its quantity is sinking shorter. But why to get this crisis more extended? When from atmosphere, water can be generated. Atmospheric water generator works on very basic mechanism. The air is first extracted, then it is filtered, followed by its condensation into water. The generated water is then stored in a collection tank. The need of the art, as we have few resources of water, atmospheric water generator is very useful for us in various ways. It helps us in resolving water crisis. It is highly effective for the places where the water is polluted. As water plays a main role in farming, pure water helps us to grow healthy crops. 75% of our body is made up of water. The armed force needs to drink enough of water to maintain the physical strength during hot summers. What is electrical water generator? It is a type of compressor that circulates refrigerant through a condenser and surrounding air is cooled by an evaporator coil. A controlled speed fan pushes filtered air over the coil. This lowers the air temperature to its dew point causing water to condense. The resulting water is then passed into a holding tank with purification and filtration system. Water vapor is condensed in the water generator to, to obtain water and is stored in the water collector. The water is filtered through the water treatment system. The clean water is stored in portable water collector and is poured out through several vessels through the distribution pump. The natural AWG comprises of a bamboo frame that supports a mesh polyester material inside. The atmospheric water vapor from either rain, fog or dew condenses against the cold surface of the mesh forming droplets of liquid water on the mesh. This water trickles down into the reservoir tank. This reservoir tank is protected by a canopy shade made up of fabric so as to prevent evaporating of water. Performance is weather dependent but need not worry as it has a capability of, of providing a community with 100 liters of water per day. Now I would like to conclude by saying despite widespread of water pollution and shortage of drinking water, there is an abundance of water around us from the air that we breathe. It doesn't matter where are you stuck, for example in desert or in middle of the sea. Atmosphere water generator involves very simple mechanism of physics or science, uses technology that challenges the other conventional methods of water utilization, requires a very basic degree of engineering made with a fine touch of art and operational mathematics. Welcome, myself Prishin Akara. My project for this year Nirman exhibition is magnetic slime. Before we go on to the experiment, let me tell you something more about magnetic slime and the science behind it. So let's start. Now let me give you a short note on what is magnetic slime. So magnetic, magnetic slime is nothing but it has iron in it which is attracted by a strong magnet. Now that we know what is magnetic slime, let us go on to the science behind magnetic slime. Magnetic slime is attracted to a very strong magnet, but something prevents the iron filings from leaving the slime and that is adhesion. Adhesion is the force that keeps the molecules of different substances together. In the addition of adhesion, the slime polymer is bonded by cohesion. So now that we know what is magnetic slime and the science behind it, let's go on to the experiment. It's experiment time. So here I have taken a slime 
but in this slant there is iron filings which has been put already in this so what we need to do is that we need to keep it on a table or you can keep it on a board so i have kept it on a table and we have to just spread it over then we have to take a bar magnet you can take a horseshoe magnet also so we need to keep this magnet close to the slime So it slowly gradually comes up and up As you can see uh, the slime has fully got attracted to the magnet though here being the fine filings inside the slime it is still getting attracted to the magnet you can see doing this experiments are so much fun and interesting i really hope you enjoyed it thank you for watching living concrete a warm welcome to the i pariti totla along with my friend priya bhandari and vishnavi ja will explain you the concept of living concrete a new kind of concrete developed at the university of colorado lauder is beaming with light unlike traditional concrete which is a mix of water sand and cement this new material incorporates with two new ingredients which is photosynthesis bacteria and gelatin the research is created arches 2 inch cube and shoe box size brick of which started out green as a result of the bacteria photosynthesis abilities before fading to brown as the material dries these materials uses the gelatin and nutrition to hold the sand together in a web of material now let's talk about the process of making a living concrete Now I'm going to describe the process of making a living concrete. To make a living concrete, first a mixture of sand, cement, water and gelatin is taken along with bacteria and poured in a mold. Then the mixture was kept for freezing. after freezing the block which we obtained was was uh, was dehydrated so that the gel like the gel like properties of gelatin can be removed from it after dehydration a test was taken to make sure that the bacteria was alive for this for this The block is kept under a humid temperature in the presence of light and air. After some time it was observed that the cracks which were there in the block were filled automatically. It was due the reason was because the reason was in the presence of light and air the bacteria was able to feed himself uh, was able to feed himself and give and give out a waste product known as calcium carbonate which is a which is an important compound found in limestone making it harder because even of it was even observed that if we cut the block into two halves we or a, into two halves we can get two different blocks so thus this means that the block or the living concrete is a self is self healing and a replicating block my friend vaishnavi we will co will continue about the characteristics and its uses of living concrete and uses of living concrete first Minerals in new materials are deposited not by chemistry but by cyanobacteria, a common class of microbes that capture energy through photosynthesis. The photosynthetic process absorbs carbon dioxide in stark contrast to the production of regular concrete, which produces huge amount of that greenhouse gas. Second, 
Living concrete is a concrete that absorbs greenhouse gases which and uses it to self-heal and reproduce itself, thus creating a sustainable environment. Third, two cubes of living concrete is enough for a whole person to stand on. Fourth, the living concrete is still undergoing changes in its process of making it into a harder substance like the regular ones. Thank you. Extract your own DNA. DNA is like a computer program, but far, far more advanced than any software ever created. I am Ayushi Kushwaha. Along with me, my group members are Avantika Saxena, Riya Amin, Divyanka Mishra, and Trisha Gada. Hello everyone, I am Avantika Saxena, and today I am going to explain about my topic Extract Your Own DNA. DNA is a molecule of two polonucleotide cells that combine with each other. Deoxide DNA is a chemical found in the nucleus of a cell that contains glucose and is responsible for the development and function of living organisms. DNA and RNA are nucleic acids. It compares a set of blueprints and has contains instructions how to perform cells. The instructions are divided into segments along the strand of DNA known as genes. Genes are made up of DNA. Genes provide code for production of proteins and control hereditary conditions such as eye color or uh, behavior. Proteins determine cell functions and so known as whether it's a skin cell, a blood cell, a bone cell, etc. and how it performs it. Materials used for DNA extraction are glass, test tube with tight fitting lid, isofill that contains 70% concentration and digital in figure for many hours, dropper bottle, paper cup, hand gloves, a lab apron, salt, bottle or distilled water, and liquid hand soap. Let us create a saline solution in a beaker. Pour 25 ml of distilled water in the beaker. Now, add 2 lab scoops of salt. Stir until the salt is completely dissolved. To the paper cup. Without swallowing, drink a mouthful of the solution from the paper cup and swish it back. It's best to do this with a clean mouth. Fit your mouth to a solution back into the cup. Then, bend the cup into a sort of spout and pour the mouth to a solution into the test tube until it fills about one half inch of the bottom of the test tube. Carefully add two drops of the liquid soap. Tilting the test tube approximately 45 degrees, use the dropper to add 20 drops of the chilled isopropyl so it slides down the test tube without disturbing the solution. Since it's less dense, the isopropyl will sit atop the mouthwash and soap solution. Now, tightly put the cap on the test tube. Very slowly and gently, tilt it upside down, then right side up three times. Do it carefully so as not to make bubbles. At this point, you should begin to see a milky white thread, possibly interspersed with bubbles, appear between the solution and the isopropyl. That's your DNA. If you wish, insert your stir rod into the test tube and gently wind the DNA around it. Let us deduce our project. When we swish the salt water around in our mouth and scrapped our teeth along the inside of our cheek, we were also collecting cheek cells. The salt helped them clump together. The decreasing agents in the soap work to break down the cell membrane to release the DNA which is housed inside the cell's nucleus. Gently mixing the soap and mouthwash solution ensured you didn't break up the DNA clumps too much. The strand of clumped together DNA would have eventually dissolved in the salt water but since it's not soluble in isopropyl, it precipitates out where the liquid layers meet. A very warm welcome to everyone present here. Today we have made a project on the topic colonization of Mars. Organizations have proposed plans for a human mission to Mars, but no person has set foot on the planet. However, landers and rovers have successfully explored the planetary surface 
are delivered information about conditions on the ground. Reason for colonizing Mars. The only reason for colonizing Mars include your curiosity, the potential for humans to provide more in-depth observational researches than unmanned rover, economic interest in its resources, and the possibility that the settlement of other planets could decrease the likelihood of human extinction. Now my friend Taita will further continue. Difficulties and hazards include radiation exposure during a trip to Mars and on its surface, toxic soil, low gravity, the isolation that co- accompanies Mars, distance from Earth, a lack of water and cold temperatures. Earth is similar to Venus in bulk composition, size and surface gravity. But Mars, similarities to Earth are more compelling when considering colonization. Now my friend Mahi will continue. Similarities of Mars and Earth the Martian day is very close in duration to Earth. A solar day on Mars is 24 hours and 39 minutes. Mars has an average surface area which is 28.4% of Earth, which is slightly lower than the dry grounds on Earth. Mars has half the radius of Earth and maintains the mass of Earth. Mars has a lower density and a smaller volume than Earth. The conditions on Mars are similar to those on Earth in terms of sunlight and temperature as compared to the other planets and moon. Now my friend Peher will continue. Equipment for colonization of Mars Colonization of Mars requires a wide variety of equipment. Both equipment directly provides services to humans and production equipment provides food, water, energy, propellant and breathable oxygen. In order to support human colonization efforts, basic requirements will be basic utility, water, oxygen, local communication, waste disposable, water recycling, habitat, shop storage, storage facilities, shop workspaces, airlock for pressurization, and dust management. Now my friend Molly will continue. To be fair, there is no shortage of ideas for how human beings might establish a colony on the right planet. They are also quite detailed, ranging from different kinds of structures that will be built, how they would be built, what they will be built from, and how they will be protected from the elements. They again, they should have to be in order to address the many challenges that living in Mars would present. This includes extreme distance from sea, unbreathable atmosphere, extreme temperatures, increased exposure to radiation. Now my friend Tatwa will continue. As a proposal, from this many proposals and ideas, a picture of Mars's settlement begins to appear. This is in keeping with our growing interest in Mars and, ev- and evolving plans to explore the planet. And while the challenges may be great, the proposed solutions are both innovative and pos- potentially effective. Whether or not we should colonize Mars, the fact remains that we can give the right commitment and enough resources. And if and when we do, we already have a pretty good idea of what Martian colonies might look like. Thank you. Interest in Mars and and evolving plans to explore the, the planet. And while the challenges may be great. The proposed solutions are both innovative and potentially effective. Whether or not we should colonize Mars, the fact remains that we can give the right commitment and enough resources. And if and when we do, we already have a pretty good idea of what Martian colonies might look like. Thank you. Hello everyone present here. Today I and my group members are going to introduce you to the upcoming new technology which is mixed reality. Mixed reality or MR is merging of both real and virtual worlds together, producing a new environment and visualizations where physical and the virtual objects coexist and interact in the real time. Mixed reality is just a hybrid of reality and virtual reality. It does not exclusively take place in either the physical world or the virtual world. Mixed reality overlays images or videos over a screen showing reality through a mobile camera, smart glasses, or headset. This ability to interact with both physical and the virtual objects gives mixed reality technology a huge number of potential applications. Applications of Mixed Reality MR 
MR has its major application in the field of education at the moment. First, military training. It is used to stimulate combat battlegrounds for military training using HMDs. Second, remote working. Employees can work in collaborations and easily face business challenges no matter where they are physically located. It also reduces language barriers as AR application can translate languages in real time. Third, stimulation based learning. Now it's time for e-learning. It's a scientific fact that we remember and learn things better in an impressive form than from just reading them. Visual memory is the easiest and memorable form of memory. The above are the few examples of MR applications which we know today. Along with this, MR is also used in the fields of healthcare, aviation, medical, business, etc. The true potential of the technology is yet to be discovered. Companies such as Microsoft with their HoloLens and Acer with their MR headsets are investing heavily in mixed reality. Mixed reality is no doubt a future technology which will change our complete perception of the technology as we have it today. A head mold display HDN worn over the entire head or worn in front of the eyes is a device that uses one or two optics to project an image directly in front of the user's eyes. It is a holographic computer you wear around your head with lenses over the eyes that project holograms you can manipulate and interact with as though directly exist in your physical surroundings. Mixed reality breaks through emotional barriers so students can experience life from new perspectives. With this immersive technology, you will create a setting for learners to collaborate and give them access to once out of reach experiences. Mixed reality breaks down the barriers between the physical and virtual realities. Let's see how we can alter realities across people, places and objects. Here we have a real office populated with real things. Let's know how adjust reality by adding virtual objects to the physical space. Notice how these objects are aware of the real surfaces in the office. Next, let's replace the real person with an avatar. This allows her to be present even though she is not physically in the room. Now, let's adjust the environment itself and make it virtual. Notice how the virtual objects and avatars continue to be present. Finally, Let's tie back this entire virtual scene to the original physical room. A subtle boundary grid can reveal real object obstacles, making it safer to walk around in virtual environments. Mixed reality unlocks existing new experience. The merger the physical and the virtual. A warm welcome to everyone. Today, we the students of HC are going to present on the topic of solar irrigation. But before starting, it is essential to know that what is solar irrigation? Solar irrigation uses the sun's energy to power a pump which supplies water to the crops to help further grow. It is an application of solar power water pumping. System produced in paddy fields and farms for watering the plants, vegetables, etc. Now, let me tell you the uses of the solar irrigation. It makes irrigation possible in remote areas like villages. It is environmentally free and does not cause any pollution. No grid connections is required. No electricity bills to be paid. No fuels required and is durable required minimal maintenance. There are so many positive factors of the solar irrigation. How does solar irrigation work? The pump is used for the transport of water and are equipped by the solar cells. The solar energy is absorbed by the cells and then converted into the electrical energy via 
a generator which then feeds the electrical motor driving the pump. Most of the traditional pump system mainly works with diesel or engine or with the local power grid. Thank you. What is solar power drip irrigation? Drip is the agricultural solar method of irrigation in which water is applied directly to the roots of the plants using operators such as orifices, perforated pipes, etc. This method is operated on low pressure with the applicators being located either on or below the surface of the ground. Why the agricultural solar drip irrigation can be the most expensive method of irrigation it is also the most advanced and efficient process of concerning effective water use. Thank you. How is solar energy used? The pumps are used for the transport of water which are equipped with the solar cells. Solar energy is absorbed by the cells which is then converted to electrical energy. Most of the traditional pump system mostly work with a diesel engine or with a local power grid. Thank you. Advantages of Imperial Irrigation Cost and financing of solar panels continue to drop, making solar power irrigation system economically feasible and competitive with other resources of energy. Solar power irrigation system reduces cost for water pumping in the long run. It has the potential for job creation in the renewable energy resources like suppliers, producers, etc. Potential for adaption to climate change by the mobilizing of groundwater resources when rainfall patterns are erratic or unpredictable. It also has the potential for the improving water quality through fertigation and filterization system. Good morning. So today I am going to explain about a topic wind turbine generator. The technology wind power is the conversion of wind energy into electricity or mechanical energy. The power in the wind is extracted by the past allowing it to the past moving blades that exert uh, torque on a rotor. The past moving blades are dependent on the rotor size and the wind speed of the wind. Advantages of wind power Wind power is cost effective Wind power is a domestic source of energy It's sustainable It's a clean source of fuel It creates job And wind power can be built in existing farms and ranches Creativity to steam Majority of wind mills consists of three blades One tower which are usually formed of tabular steel There are less common varieties or with the two blades or with concrete or lattice steel towers. At the height of 100 meters, the towers allow the turbine to take an advantage, give an advantage of the high wind speed usually found at high altitude. We have constructed this wind turbine generator by using PUC pipe, nut bolt, ball bearing, a small plastic fan and a DC motor. Uh, by this, uh, uh, by the wind, due to the wind, the, uh, the uh, turbine will move into the direction of the wind. Due to the wind, the fan rotates and generates electricity and this electricity can be measured by a voltage multimeter. Now I am going to demonstrate this by using an LED light. Good morning to all teachers and my dear friends. Today I and my group will introduce human cyborg. A cyborg is a portmanteau of a cybernetic organism is a being with both organic and biometric body part. The term was coined in 1960 by Manafort Klein and Nathan Klein but the cyborg may also be portrayed as looking more like robots or more like ordinary humans. 
an organism which is partially mechanical and partially biological is called cyborg the star wars character dart vader is a good example for a cyborg he is the person whose body has been improved from technology he is mainly but not entirely human thank you Abyssin is a Spanish born British Irish cyborg artist and activist for trans species rights in New York City. He is best known for being recognized as the first person to have an antenna implanted in his skull and is legally recognized by the government as the first cyborg. He has an antenna in his head which picks up vibrations of colors like ultraviolet colors and infrared and can receive telephone calls and satellite images directly in his head. Neil Harbison is one of these people. The artist was born with complete color blindness, far from a disability. Harbison considers his natural, natural worldview as an asset. How does the cyborg work? The cyborg antenna is a sensory system created to extend color perception. It has been implanted and also integrated in Harbison's head and it sprouts from within his occipital bone. It has been permanently attached to Harbison's head since 2004 and it allows him to feel and hear colors as audible vibrations inside his head, including colors invisible to the human eye such as infrareds and ultraviolets. The antenna also allows internet connection and therefore the reception of color from other sensors or from satellitism and send audible vibration through his skull. Harbison began developing the antenna at college in 2003. One cyborg. Harbison has given permission to five friends, one in each continent, to send color, images, video or sound directly into his head. If he receives color by asleep, his friends can color and alter his dreams. The first public demonstration of skull transmitted image was broadcast live on a chat show. The first person to make a phone call directly into his skull was Ruby Wax. Reason: Neil Harbison chose to be a cyborg as he smiles disarmingly. It's a new body part. He says, pointing at it. When I was studying music in England, I decided to create a new organ for the sense of color because I didn't want to wear technology i wanted to have an organ that will allow me to sense color thank you a brief computer interface or bci provides a direct path of communication from the brain to an external device effectively creating a cyborg after the patient is unconscious through anesthesia brain pacemakers or electrodes are implanted into the region of the brain where the cause of the disease is present conclusion with this, we conclude that the cyborg is both a product of social reality and of fictionalized instruction that enhances human capability. In the incarnation, the cyborg becomes a co -heritor. Therefore, it blurs the boundary between reality and fiction. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Minimum Exhibition 2020. My name is Manan Trivedi, and I am from Class 8C. The theme for this year's Minimum Exhibition is STEAM. As you know, the four form of STEAM is Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts and Mathematics and our topic UV towel dryer and sanitizer is based on technology. We have designed a dry, clean or very capable towel dryer and sanitizer that not only dries your towel but also disinfects it by killing most of the bacteria that causes allergies and respiratory diseases. The purpose of designing this UV towel dryer and sanitizer is the problem of having a wet towel after a shower has plagued the world for decades. This UV towel dryer has designed to improve fast paced living, reducing energy consumption and saving million gallons of water all over the world. It also provides positive impact on people's health. Thank you. Now my friend Anand will explain you further. Hello everyone, I am Arun Saxena and this is our model UV rays towel dryer and sanitizer. The product sanitizes the towel and passes through the machine using the UV rays to do so. It uses miniature turbine to direct hot rays towards the towel and maintain the temperature to allow for easy drying. In doing so, it breaks the hydrogen bonds that holds the water molecules to each other, releasing the water in its gaseous state. It uses UV rays to keep the towel germ free and also it consists of temperature consisting function that can keep the towel warmer all the time. The UV light disinfects the towel and keep them fresh and fluffy. Now my friend, 
My name is Yash and I am going to explain some principles used in our model. First, dehumidification. Dehumidifiers pull moisture out of the air, put it in a liquid state and remove it from a towel. Second, UV disinfection. The power of UV light is used to sanitize the towel as it passes through our machine. UV light specifically at 254 nanometer is scientifically considered bactericidal. 254 nanometer wavelengths of light kill or inactivate microorganisms. UV light is 6 log efficient at 6 inches which means that it is 99.99% efficient. Now my friend Kalpesh will... My name is Kalpesh and I will continue the explanation on UV towel dryer and sanitizer. My first principle on fluid dynamics states that whenever the speed of the liquid increases, the pressure decreases. And whenever the speed of the liquid decreases, the pressure increases. As we all know, evaporation takes a major hand in drying most of the things. And especially so with a thick towel situated in water. We use the heating coils to dry the towel. Whenever we heat the air, the hydrogen molecules that hold the bond with water breaks down, reducing the water. Now my friend, Ronak will continue. Hi, I'm Ronak. Now I am going to tell you the uses of UV towel dryer and sanitizer. UV sterilization, also known as UV disinfection or ultraviolet geomedical irradiation, UVGI works by breaking down certain chemical bonds, scrambling the structure of DNA, RNA, and proteins, causing a microorganism to be unable to multiply. UVC light is just one of the numerous methods hospitals can add to standard disinfection regimens to continue to fight infection rates for all pathogens including drug resistant organisms. Formal sterilizers can be used at home, spa, beauty salon, hair salon, hotels and most of the places. It mainly uses UV rays to keep progress germ free and also the cabinet has temperature consistency function that can keep the towel warmer and all the time. Thank you for watching our video on UV towel dry and sanitizer. of cars as many cars were invented the demand in new features also increased so that comfortable seating and security system this led to buyers attract towards this car as many buyers increased this led to traffic on the roads and now we are in 2020s which is which is the future of cars and in the future of cars we have created such a vehicle can make you travel from one destination to another in a shorter period of time that is the flying car flying car is a is a kind of personal aircraft which which leads you to travel from one destination to another through air and that also in less time and there are companies to be known such as Aviomobile and Porsche building flying cars but now these are just a concept and we have created a model of a flying car which looks how when it will be when it will be launched in the market how it will look it might look like a normal car but when it wants to fly it would come what itself in a flying car. A flying car is a type of person employed in a loadable aircraft that provides door to door transportation. The term flying car is also sometimes used to include hover cars. Our project is made by an old model car and we have attached two DC motors with two waste fans. And to make the car move, we have also attached an RC motor. We have also used two 9 watt batteries. For the background, we have used a white chart paper and some colors. Flying car can be used in the future as a personal air mobile. It would be used to travel long journeys in less time and also like a business vehicle to pick up people from long destination and can also be used as an emergency vehicle such as police car. So after having so many uses of flying car, I will tell you some advantages and disadvantages of flying car. Advantages of flying car are lower emissions, reducing traffic pollution and frees up the city roads for pedestrians and cyclists. Some disadvantages of flying car are flying car cannot be 
बी मेड अ सेफ मेथड ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्ट बिकॉज पीपल मे टॉक ऑन द फोन एंड रीड मैगजीन वाइल यूजिंग फ्लाइंग कार सो द रेट ऑफ एक्सीडेंट मे डेस्टिकली इंक्रीज एंड वंस दे क्रैश इन टू अनदर द चांस ऑफ बींग अलाइव आर वेरी लेस एंड वंस दे फॉल ऑन द ग्राउंड किलिंग पेडिस्ट्रियंस LB Liberty is the world's first flying car invented in 2001. Pioneer world waterman invented the first flying car. In 2025, flying cars will lead the market. Among 1.3 million dollars will be the cost for the flying car. Presenting our model flying car. Welcome to all. Today our group is going to present a project on the topic artificial electromagnetic fields. It is made by Rushil Lehru, Daksh Jain and Sujal Rani. Introduction. Electromagnetic fields are a combination of invisible electric and magnetic fields of force. They are generated by natural phenomena like the earth's magnetic force but also by human activities mainly through the use of electricity. Mobile phones, power lines and computer screens are examples of equipment that generates electromagnetic fields. Most man-made electromagnetic fields reverse their direction at regular intervals of time, ranging from high radio frequencies, mobile phones to intermediate frequencies, computer screens to extremely low frequencies, power lines. The differences between natural and man-made electromagnetic fields are natural Electric fields are produced by the local accumulation of electric charges in the atmosphere associated with thunderstorms. The Earth's magnetic field, for example, makes the compass needle point north-south and is used by birds and fish for navigation because these species have highly sensitive electrical and magnetic receptors. Man-made. In addition to natural sources, in the electromagnetic spectrum, there are fields produced emanating from man-made technologies. These are the much-mentioned artificial fields. There are many types of artificial fields, as many as the quantity of existing technologies in the world. And year after year, we add more artificial fields to our environment. Now, my friend, Roshil will continue. Thank you, Sunil. We have made a video of our experiment so that you can come to know that how exactly do artificial electromagnetic fields work let us see what are the materials required for the experiment we need two copper wires or a copper rod small pieces of copper wires or rods that are four of them one magnetic ball one super glue or one glue gun two small wooden blocks one wired copper ring and one big battery so let us see how to do the experiment step 1 the assembly for that we take the two copper rods with some of the pieces of the small copper rods along with the magnetic board we will bend the copper rods a little so that it becomes curved then we will use after that we will take the small copper rods and attach them at every end of the big copper rods and nearly in the between we will also attach two pieces of them after that we will start placing everything first we will place the magnetic ball in the middle then We will take one of the wooden blocks and stick them to the ground. Then we will take another wooden block and keep it nearby but not stick it. First we will take the copper wire ring and keep it just below the copper rod and the magnetic ball. 
After that, we will place the second wooden block and stick it to the ground. And even stick the copper wire to the ground. After all this process, we will stick all of it again with glue gun just to ensure it is stuck properly. After that, we will take the big battery and attach it to the copper wires. After connecting it to the copper wire, after all this, this is the final product. Now my friend, now my friend, Daksh will continue. Now I will tell you the examples of electromagnetic fields used in day-to-day -day life. In daily life, every day, every day, everybody is to a greater or lesser degree. Exposed to electromagnetic fields. Example are the fields produced by kitchen appliances, radio transmitters, and mobile phones. Conclusion Electromagnetic fields are a combination of invisible electric and magnetic fields of the force. There are two types of electric magnetic fields natural and artificial. Natural electric fields are produced by the local accumulation of electric charges in the atmosphere associated with thunderstorms, artificial, in addition to natural resources in the electromagnetic spectrum. These are fields produced by emanating from man-made technology. These are much mentioned after artificial fields. Thank you. Good morning, my respected teachers, my dear friends and all the viewers. Myself, Pranjal, with my friends Raghav, Vineet and King. Let me and my friends introduce you to one of the most fascinating things ever created by the humans, the Hyperloop. Hyperloop is a possessed mode of passenger and transport, designed and released by a joint team of Tesla and SpaceX. Hyperloop is a sealed tube or a system of tube with low air pressure through which a pod may travel free of air resistance or friction. Hyperloop could convey people from airport or hypersonic speed while being very energy efficient. Now my friend Kim will explain you more about Hyperloop. This would drastically reduce travel times versus train as well as planes over distance of under approximately 1500 kilometers. Elon Musk first publicly mentioned the Hyperloop in 2012. His initial concept incorporated reduced pressure tubes in which pressurized capsules ride on air bearings driven by linear induction, motors and axial compressors. The Hyperloop Alpha was first published in 20 13 August, proposing and examining a route running from the Los Angeles region to the San Francisco Bay Area, roughly following the Interstate 5 corridor. Now my friend Raghav will tell you more about Hyperloop. Hyperloop Genesis paper conceived of a Hyperloop system that would propel passengers along a 350 mile, that is 560 kilometers at a route, or 760 miles per hour, that is 1200 kilometers per hour allowing for a travel time of 35 minutes which is considerably faster than the current rail or airway travel times. Preliminarily, this estimates for this Los Angeles to San Francisco suggested routes were included in a white paper US $6 billion for a single passenger version only and US $7.1 million for somewhat a larger diameter version transporting passengers and vehicles. Transportation analysts has doubt that the system could be constructed under the budget. Some analysts claim that the Hyperloop would be several billion dollars over budget taking into consideration of construction, development and operation cost. So now my friend Vineet will continue and tell you more about the Hyperloop train. Thank you. The Hyperloop concept has been explicitly open sourced by Musk and SpaceX and others have been encouraged to take the idea and further development. To that end, a few companies have been formed and several interdisciplinary students led terms are working to advance the technology. SpaceX built an approximately one mile long subscale track for its sport design competition at its headquarters in California. The first Hyperloop was conducted by its Chief Technology Officer Joost Jigel and Sara Lucian, Director of Passenger Experience 
as the first passenger at a speed of 172 km per hour.